Hello everybody, Grace Steel plays and we're with a new game for the channel called Birthdays the Beginning. So besides having a very unique and jacked up name, Birthdays the Beginning is a god simulation, I guess ecosystem building style of game. It's by the same gentleman that made Harvest Moon, only it's very, very 3D and pretty damn cool. So in it, you get to create everything. You start with a flat cube that has nothing on it except for dirt and sadness and from your cube. You get to create everything from algae to plants to amphibians to dinosaurs, blah, blah, blah. Eventually, yes, you can make human beings. So you really do get to play God. There's all kinds of weird power-ups and like the, every single thing that you do affects the ecology of the system. It's, it's legit. I'll, I'll show you in a second. So there's a giant tutorial. I have already taken the time to go through it. I probably messed around in it for three hours. The game can seem intimidating, but when you kind of get the hang of it, it's really sweet. We're just going to go into free mode and we're going to select the small cube size for right now. I'm not going to transfer my terrain and organisms. I have a previous game that I had going just to kind of learn it so I wasn't fumbling around. You can fumble around a long time in this freaking game. Don't get me wrong. We're not going to transfer them, but I'll show my stuff to you later because we're probably not going to get as far as I did previously. But I am going to transfer my capture info levels and items. And what that means is that as you build your little area, you can see right here, actually where this, uh, where the arrow is, you can see how like lush and green and powerful my little, my little continent was compared to how it started this dirt, sad, gray, pathetic zone. We're going to transfer this lower one here because that's going to give me all my, uh, my levels and stuff. So levels, what do they do? They allow you to, oh God, it's the creature Navi. I have to introduce you to this guy. He has the worst sounding voice of any video game being I've ever heard in my life. We're going to try and get rid of him as quick as possible. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and call ourselves something. So we get to have a name. Our name today will be, uh, Spoon Master. Oh, you can't actually fit sp <laughs> so Spoon Mast? <laughs> sure. Why not? Is that okay? Not really, but today it is. Oh no. Oh, Navi, stop talking, please. You're making everyone's ears bleed worse than I do. All right, so here we are. I don't think that he's really going to go into anything anymore. I think you can do like a little help desk by clicking on the, the right paddle button here. Yep, multiply organisms as you please. So I'm playing this with a gaming pad. You can also use your mouse and stuff if you want to. But I found that using the gaming pad kind of works a lot better. Uh, so what we're looking at here is the macro mode. The macro mode is basically an overview of our entire cube. But to get things done, we're going to be in the micro mode. You're going to notice cube status, air temperature, plants, animals, land, and water. We don't have anything. We've got absolutely nothing. So let's make some stuff. Upper right, we've got a mini map. It's freaking amazing because it shows us where little power-ups are. These little power-ups are like god powers. They allow us to interact with the world in ways that normal mortals probably shouldn't. You can see that little, uh, that little bar there at the bottom. It looks like a friggin' ticker from, uh, the Dow Jones Index or something like that. Just telling us that we're getting little recovery leaves, field sources, stuff like that. Basically, it just makes our job a lot easier. So the very first thing that we're gonna want to do is make some water. Making water in the game is actually fairly simplistic. Um, all you have to do is lower an area beneath but lower than zero t if you if you notice over here cursor status zero t that's not testosterone that's something else that is terrain levels so i'm making that up i, I hope it means terrain though but basically what it is is zero is like right at sea level we want to go below sea level in order to do things so let us do that now that is not what i want to do at all that's our little bleepy sound when we go ahead and mess with the uh the environment Using the mouse pad, or not the mouse pad, the gaming pad, look at that. We can make our zones way, way bigger. So I'm going to make it as big as possible. That's one of the abilities that having high levels gives me. Let's go ahead and knock it down here. Now we have water. 1% water, actually. What I have found, now you notice as we do this, we're increasing the temperature of the planet. Right now, our planet is like this sad, barren, cold wasteland. But water is going to help insulate it, I think. I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a biologist. I'm someone that likes this game. It's a cool game. I really think it is. What I like to do is get to about 20% water. Right around 20%. I don't know. I, I guess probably anywhere between 
10 and 20% would be pretty legit, but we're going to do 20. How do I want? Now you can uh, you can kind of look around and flip flop around like this here. There's also another style of mode. I'm going to show you here. This is more like your classic first person view style of mode. You can go inside the water here, pop outside the water. Right now, again, it doesn't look too cool, but that's because we don't have anything. All we have is a whole lot of nothing. So once we have things, it'll look a lot cooler. Let's make... How do I want our bodies of water to look? I think what we'll do is we're going to make one. We can do whatever we want, recognize. We can mess with this as much or as little as we want to. Let's go ahead and make it like this. I want like a little L shape or something like that. So let's kind of, because my other body of water was like perfectly straight. So let's kind of go maybe like this over here. Yeah, let's go all the way around. It will, it'll, it'll almost be like, like we're making an island or something like that. Well, I guess it'll actually be more like a peninsula. So kind of go this way, we've got 17%, 18%. What happens if we butt right up against here? I don't think that the water goes flying off the ground or anything. I don't think. Oh, we're at the edge. Okay, let's check something out. I'm going to go ahead and bring it down to small. And what happens if I go like this? Does it, damn it. Does it go flying off the side of the... No, it doesn't. I, it looks like your negative edge pool, man. That's what I'm talking about. Freaking sweet. That would be terrible if we lost all of our water. All right, let me go ahead and kind of smooth all this out. You can see right now we're at 19%. That's pretty good for the most part. We can probably just legitimately loom right about there and be fine. But I think what I'll do, I think what I'll do is make one more chunk of water right over here. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention... With the sound of the jet propulsion system, which is the uh, left trigger button. Wah! <laughs> we can fly all over our cube. Now, I picked a small cube, so it's not a big deal. We don't have to go too far. This is just to get things started, boys. Let me tell you something. All right. So let's go ahead, and I always want to extend everything upwards for some reason. Oh, you know what? That is not, that is not perfect. Let's go ahead and make it nice and perfect. There we go. That's a little bit better, and we'll make it even. All right, there we go. So we have our air. This is kind of cool. I didn't actually mean to do this, but you notice we have like two little trenches right over here. Actually, I can probably show you a little bit easier like this. We have two little trenches right here. I'm going to leave these. I'm not going to fix that. We're going to have a little variation inside of our seat. We can change this at any time recognized. All right, so we have this done. Let's pop on out using the Y button over here to macro mode. And this is kind of where we allow time to fluctuate. So right now it's the cube year zero. Let's go ahead and start our years moving right along. Uh, oh, you know what we have to do? There we go. Phytoplankton. Go, my children. We have a thousand of them. We can also super boost time using the left trigger. You can see our phytoplankton is like really moving along now. Once we get enough of it, there we go. We're going to get zooplankton. So real quick, let me just go ahead and show you guys some stuff. So once you get these items in the game, these little critters here, they legitimately exist in the game. See how there's little glowing dots of power now? Look at that. We got little glowing dots of power all over the place. Let me go ahead and get down here so we can see them. And you can hear now we have almost like a sea sound. You know what I mean? Like when we hover over the water. The cool thing is the more stuff you get in this game, the more the musical palette opens up. There's like a music score that happens, but you need more things in order to make that occur. So now we have a couple of uh, a couple of critters over here. Let's mess around a little bit. Let's do a little let's do a little something something here. Let's see. What what do we want to do? I'm going to make things a little bit deeper. We have our little trenches over here. Let's make one of the trenches a lot deeper. So let's kind of let's make yeah, there well, do I want it that big? Let's make it that big. Let's make it that big, and let's go ahead and send it down here. I'm going to go ahead and lower it. There we go. Lower and lower the seas go as I decide. We'll make it right about there right now, and we'll kind of see what that does. Now, again, I played a little bit of the tutorial, so I kind of understand what I want to do with my little zones here. Let's go ahead and get back out of here, and we're going to see the time pass once more. Moving right along, zooplankton. Now, those little icons that are over here kind of tell you whether or not they're multiplying, staying stagnant, or what. So right now, you can kind of see they're just kind of like staying stagnant. So that means that we're going to have to do something. Oh, a seed of ev evolution has emerged in the cube, and a sea of mutation! What does it all mean? Let's go check it out real quick. In the mini-map, little orange chunks over there are little things that you can get. So we just went ahead and grabbed a seed of mutation. We've got a field source over there. And let me go ahead and... Super, super jet propulsion over to the Seed of Evolution. There we go. Seed of Evolution, baby. Now let's go ahead and, let's see here. Let's go ahead and potentially use one of these. 
Um, to use your stuff, it's X. And then you can see we have a whole slew of things down here. All kinds of stuff. Oh, we have a mountain source. Um, that just creates a mountain really quick. If there's a lot of land, it may appear in the cube. How do I feel about that? Do we want to make a mountain? I don't see why we don't have to. Water of life that boosts the fertility of organisms. That could be cool. Global warming, global cooling. We got rain clouds. We got freaking excess rain clouds. We got all kinds of stuff, man. Vigorous vegetation. We don't have any plant life right now. Rainbow coating. Protection in, in an organism from the environment, but also renders, renders them sterile. Ooh, look at that. Warmth stone increases by 10 degrees. Flame stone, scorch stone. Oh, wow. We got, look at all these stones over here. We got glass jars in there, have you. Save an organism's genetic info. This info can be placed only once. Once used, you cannot use it again for a while. All right, let's see if we can use our mountain source. Let's see here. You need a 15 by 15 area. So let's go ahead. Let's see here. You need a 15 by 15 area. And then in order to use it, we're going to go ahead and... There we go. And now we have a mountain. Random mountain. Mountains are good, though, because mountains can create different types of, uh, like, I don't know. I guess I'll call it ecosystems and stuff like that by messing around with the temperature. We are going to need to lower the temperature, I'm pretty sure, because right now the temperature in our water is very, very high. You can see right there it says it's 51 degrees Celsius. That is pretty high. So we're going to want to reduce that big time. So the way that you reduce it, is to make your water more and more deep. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. I'm gonna mess around with the water size real fast. All right, and we just gave birth to stromalites. So, oh, by the way, in case you ever wanted to, you can actually go down here to the different little creatures. Now, I can't capture them, unfortunately, but you can, at the very least, See that you can see it's little, uh, hold on here, it's little pointer there. See how it's like pointed to it right now? Well, if that pointer was pink, You'd be able to press, I guess it's the select button on my controller, and you can capture it, and that's how you get the experience points that you have that allows you to get, like, the bigger, uh, the bigger cursor and more hit points. It drains hit points to, like, mess with the world, but you get your hit points back, like, super fast when you go over to the, uh, evolution, the macro, uh, view, so it's not a big deal to, like, lose a bunch of them. Now, if we press on the start button... We're going to get to see a bunch of things, like the game info, the cube status is pretty cool, because this actually shows you, like, your population, your air temperature. Look at how our air temperature has uh, kind of, like, dropped over time, which is good, because 50 degrees Celsius is probably a little bit too hot for a lot of creatures. You can see our water amounts, moisture levels in there, have you. Go down to library. Check this out, boys. You can see everything about the different stuff that you get unlocked and everything else. So right here is our stromatolites. Strom Again, I'm not a biologist. I'm going to be getting a lot of this wrong. It tells you all about the birth temperature, all about the adaption temperature right down here, the height that it lives in. So for the things that we're going to want, so you see like this stuff over here, like Cal... Oh my God. Calunia? <laughs> it tells you exactly what you want. So you want the shallows. We want 43 to 53 degrees. And the adaption temperature is around 31 to 63. So it looks like we're right about where we need to be. If you go further and further down, oh, look at what I got down here, boy. It's an, it's an eel raptor. I got a little dinosaur previously. So this is what we're going to need to eventually evolve into this. Now, everything evolves. So this guy doesn't just appear out of nothing. You have to start with very, very simple creatures, like the trilobites and stuff like that. Was this thing called? The Astra... Astraspis... <laughs> Oh, these things are fantastic. God love ecology. I'll tell you what. Over here in the tree, it just kind of shows you what evolves into what. So if we go way over here, we can zoom in and out as we please. So you can see over here, our stromal caucuses over here are going to be evolving into a ton of different plants, which is super cool. Um, now the other thing that we're gonna want is we're gonna want this jellyfish creature eventually. You can see he's number five on the old who's a what's this table. As a matter of fact, we can go back over to our library for the pictures and we can learn about him real fast. So this is the Cyclomedusa, primitive jellyfish that float through very hot seas consuming plankton. So we need a certain amount of plankton. They can be found near stromna, stromnamatolites. I'm just going to call them stromas. Let's go ahead and fly over here to grab whatever that was. We got global cooling, all right, and it looks like there's no other power-ups on the board right now. Let's go back over to our macro view and move things along. There we go. 
We just got Cyclo- Whoa, we're getting all kinds of stuff over here. Cyclo Medusa Calunia. Things are going up and down. Oh, 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 okay, good. I was just making sure things were going to stabilize. So right now we have Cyclo Medusa, which is probably like the coolest name thing you could possibly think of. We can go over here to check this stuff out too. Let's kind of wander over here. Oh, you know what? Hold on. There we go. Now we can see all our little critters. We got some plant life right over there. Got our jellyfish blibbing and blobbing around on the bottom of our seas. This is mostly shallows, if you remember correctly. Oh, yeah, we got some plant life going on now, boys. Oh, yeah. And there's our strobas. They're looking good, looking good. Our plankton's still glowing inside of the water. But things are still looking pretty barren, huh? It's not looking quite awesome enough yet. I think we're going to need to evolve things a little bit more. Now, you can see things are still pretty hot for the most part. We don't want too much water on here, though. Otherwise, the ecosystem gets pretty damn hard to uh, regulate. So that's why I like 20%. But what we can do is we can start making some shelving. So let's go over here and let us go ahead and expand the size of our thingadoo. And we'll kind of move up this way. And now we will start making just a couple of shelves for the heck of it. So let's kind of move over here. We'll kind of raise up the land, so to speak, like that right there. You can see the temperature going down a might bit no big deal all right we've got a little bit of shelving let's see what it does go back over here to the macro view and move things along all right everything's kind of the green arrows means that things are doing great oh we just got el rathia look at how quickly things are growing boys oh yeah that's what i like to see our air temperature going down holy cow we're getting all kinds of stuff all right let me go ahead and slow things down we're gonna go back down here a whole bunch of stuff just happened and we're gonna talk about it right now so first off, water is starting to seep into our land. And what that's going to do is that's going to create, see how if I hover over. So look at this area right over here right now. This is our, this is our humidity level. So if you notice, 35% over there. And then once we get to the green areas and stuff, it's more closer to like 41 and such. And you can see in these little areas where it hasn't seeped in, where there's not a lot of water that seeped in over here, it's like 18%. So we want a lot of moisture because a lot of different things are going to start growing if it's moist enough. Let's go check it. Let's go check things out. Get down low here and check some of these different plants and things out. Oh yeah. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, we got a little critter. Little critter. What in the world is that? Right there. Look at this guy. We can click on him and he kind of like stops and looks at us momentarily. He knows what time it is. Looks like a looks like a a a, a swimming snail or something. I don't really know how else to describe this hideous and yet quite awesome creature that we very, very much needed to progress in our our ability. So let's get back over here. We got a couple of power-ups you can see around the board. So let's go ahead and see if we can grab those real fast. Looks like there's one right over here. See what that is. Normal recovery. We don't need a lot of recovery right now because I have a lot of hit points because of my level. So the level right now is not a big deal. Oh, we got another seed of mutation. Uh, we know we don't really need the seed mutations yet. Maybe we'll use them when we get like some cooler stuff because as you can see in the beginning The evolutions happen really fast now recognize again That the evolutions are happening fast for me because I kind of know what temperatures we need But remember if you ever need to know about your temperatures and stuff like that just go down to the library and You can go even on places of stuff that you haven't you haven't unlocked yet. So we haven't unlocked this guy but you can see that in order to unlock him, we need like a certain birth temperature, a certain adaption temperature, and it needs to be in the seas. So one of the things that we don't have yet is we don't have any seas. We have a lot of shallow. Oh, we do have a little bit of seas right over here. I take that back. I'm a giant liar. We have some seas right over here. So let's go ahead. Let me think about this for a second. You know what? Let's go ahead and increase our seas just a little bit. Just a little bit. We're going to go ahead and yeah, we'll go ahead and push this seas down right there. We got another little trench. I like having like uneven water a little bit because I feel like it simulates realistic water instead of having everything like be totally flat. You know what I mean? Let's go back over to the macro view and see what grows from this new kind of area that we've created. All right, so right now the, oh, we just got two new things. Dino, Dino, Oris. <laughs> oh, we're getting all kinds of stuff. Okay, okay, all right, stop, stop everyone, stop. So we've got a couple of new things that even I didn't get when I was playing. So now I can show you how to unlock stuff and get uh, more experience. So what we're going to look for is up here in the minimap, we're going to be looking for anything that's, that's like glowing. See how these little dots right over here are kind of like pulsing? 
So right over there, that means that there's something new and exciting. And right there, look at that. Because there's a pink little arrow, that means it's something new. Let's go beam down, Scotty. Or beam up, I guess. And we just captured Dino Orthus. There we go. It's a brachiopod that lives with Calunia and Elrathia in very hot shallows. So that's pretty cool. Wow, we have a huge population of that right now. 155,000 of them. That is pretty legit, quite actually. So now it looks like we have, I do believe we have something else wandering around. Ah, it's on the other side of the map. So let's go ahead and check that out over here, I do believe. There we go. I'm kind of like, I'm, I need to get, hold on, let me get straightened up here. There we go. Now things are moving a little bit easier. Where are you at, my friend? There you are, you little buddy. Come on over here. Spoonmast wants to obtain you. Don't worry, we're not hurting them. We're just uh, putting them in a jar and looking at them longingly. So we've got this starfish looking creature over here. Ophiuroid. I know I've got some biology loving friends over in the comment section. You guys are going to love this game and you're going to freaking hate me for pronouncing everything wrong. I'm so sorry. The star shaped whatever a derm that dwells in shallow seas among Calunia. Oh, it's a carnivorous creature. So this subsists on our other things that we have. I'm just going to be calling stuff like things and stuff. Let's go ahead and dip on down here and take a look at these guys real quick. Where are you at? There he is. Right there. Look at him hanging out. Can I go through the... Yep, sure can. I was wondering if I could go straight through the ground. So there's the core of the planet. Got some lava coming through there. Or magma, I guess is the appropriate term. Let's go ahead and get out of this right now. So we've found two new creatures. Haven't leveled up yet, but we've got all kinds of new stuff appearing over here. It looks like there's a power up. Yep, there sure is. We just got more normal recovery. All right. So I think that we can pretty much just let this place continue to move. Oh, you know what I really want? I really want a river. I don't think that we've obtained a river yet, though. Let's go check it out. We've got a lot of things here. we got rain clouds, um, which I haven't even used yet, just because I don't really need to do it at this point. Warmth stones. This is, again, for, like, messing around with your temperatures a whole lot. So, like, let's say... Let's say you want to uh, have one temperature that's substantially hotter than the other. Like you want like some sort of crazy tropical rainforest. That's what that's for without like destroying your entire ecosystem. Or like let's say you want a tundra. We've got an ice stone over here. Maybe we'll do that later though. Um, so we have all oh, a river source. This is what I wanted. Actually, I think I probably had them. But we want the river source. I want the river source big time, and we're going to be doing it. So what we need is a 3x3 three three section of flat land where we can at least start our river. And that's exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and hold on here. Let me go ahead and do this. We don't want to do this. All right, so for our river source, we need a slightly raised up. You can't do it on, like, perfectly uh, zero terrain land. You need at least a one. So let's go ahead and do it here. Bloop. There we go. We got a river. Now check this out. This is freaking cool. Watch this. If we go, hold on here, and I, well, let me get out of, let me get out of this, and let me go ahead and decrease the size of my pointer. This, again, this is the arrow buttons, and let's go ahead and smash this down. Now we have a freaking waterfall. How cool is that? Now, the other thing that we can do here is we can kind of, like, drag this around, and hold on now. Watch this. We're going to get another waterfall on this side. Isn't that crazy? We got a little waterfall over there now. That looks kind of weird because, like, it's not actually waterfalling into anything. So let's go ahead and have it legitimately connect, hold on now, to our, I'm going to kind of maneuver so it makes this a little bit easier on me, to our body of water right there. There we go. Now we've got a river that flows into our body of water. It looks at least somewhat legit. The water is coming out of nowhere. Maybe we'll fix that eventually. All right, so we've got a little bit of river. It's going to be providing moisture to this area. Let's continue to kind of pump things along. Oh, creatures, exist for my amusement. Oh, we just lost our Andreolepsis. He just went extinct. Don't worry, though. It's totally possible that he will be reborn at some point. Let me go ahead here and continue to move things along. So let's hear Astra. There he is. He was just reborn. And he just died. And we got Scalio... Sidio Photon? Hold on here. Let's go find out what we're doing wrong. So our little buddy keeps dying, right? So we need to find out why that guy keeps dying. Oh, we got a little buff over here as well. Let me go ahead and grab that right over there. And, oh, this is what I'm talking about. Hold on. Can you kind of hear the music? It's, it's like, legitimately getting a little, a little bit more tropical. Like the little bongos are playing. 
That's because we're getting a lot of different creatures around here now, a lot of different plants and stuff like that. Look, man, things are looking much less barren now. Looking pretty legit. That's what I'm talking about. So right over here is our little buddy that keeps dying, I do believe. This little fish right over here. Looks pretty cool, right? Problem is he wants a birth temperature of 30 to 40 and then an adaption time of 15 to 68. So let's go check some stuff out over here. What's the temperature of our seas right now? Uh, as you hover over stuff, again, in the uh, little left, uh, right hand area over here, it's going to tell you what the temperature of everything is. So 32 degrees kind of over here, 33 degrees. Actually, everything looks pretty good for the most part for our buddy. Oh, and check our river out over here. Now we've got plant life starting to form. Uh, through our river so if we continue to extend our river so we can go over here like this and I can go ahead and start kind of pushing this down You'll notice the water continues to flow and the moisture begins to seep in the area around it All right, let's go back over to macro view now Don't worry. You don't have to worry about your entire planet like just dying immediately That's not going to happen. It would take a certain amount of time. So let's go ahead over here. All right We've got our guys again yeah, Andrea Lepsis gets birthed a lot and then immediately dies. That's probably because there's not enough for him to eat. So, let's go over here real quick. We've got a couple of new creatures on here. Oh, wow, look at this. We've got palm trees. No, man, we got everything now. This is looking friggin' great. Our little area is looking pretty legit now. Look at these palm trees over here, huh? Looking pretty good. Hold on, though. There's probably some new creatures. I know I saw some new creatures, so let's see if we can find them. If they're not already dead. Ah, so this is why. If we go over to our sea, we can see that it's 29 degrees. We really need it to be 30 degrees about. So the sea only exists at minus 4 terrain. So what we can do to kind of like get our, our water up a little bit. Well, we can do a couple things. The first thing that we can do if we wanted to is we could lower our mountain. Which is fine. But the other thing that we could do is we could make some of this water a little bit more shallow. So that's probably what I'm going to do instead. Let's go grab our giant chunk over here. And let's start making our waters just a slight bit more shallow. All right, so I went ahead and smoothed this area out over here. It's just a little bit more shallow. Let's see if this allows us to get our fish going. We really want that fish to kind of move along. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and move things along. So let's see over here. Oh, we just got a, we just got a bunch of, a couple new things happening. Oh, boy. Critters are dying, but critters are being born as well all over the place. And you can see right over here, we're going to get to capture some new stuff. Oh, right over here. Right over here. Let's find out what we got. What sort of new and hideous creature have we unlocked through the power of birthdays? In case you're wondering, the reason why it's called birthday is the beginning is because every time one of these things is made, the game considers it to be like a birthday. So happy birthday to Anthracomedusa. Yes, jellyfish that live in warm seas near Caudium Fragile. Fra I think it's fragile, but it's probably fragile or something. They appear to have taken the place of Cyclomedusa. All right, very good. So not only do we have that, I can see something over here. I can see there he is. There's our little buddy. What do we got down here? Something cool, I'm hoping. We have. It looks like kind of like a mollusk almost. Oh, it is a mollusk. A mollusk that lives near the Caudium thing. In cool climates, they've taken the place of Dino, uh, Dino Orthus. Seas are still a little bit too warm right now. So what I'm going to do, I may even get rid of some of this sea. Like this over here. I may go ahead and just close that off completely and turn that into land. Actually, I may do that with a bunch of this. Just because, there we go. That's because that'll get us closer to 20%. Actually, that'll get us exactly at 20% just about. All right, so with my great and glorious powers, I've brought the seas up just a little bit. Let's see what this does for our environment as we move things along. Here we go, boys. And, all right, some new creatures are being born. Red ferns, all right. A couple of creatures are dying in their stead. Whoa, Dido Motondia or whatever that is. What in the world is that? Let's go see if we can find it. All right, so one of the things that you can do if you want to is you can hold down on the left trigger. I'm sorry, not the left trigger, technically the left button. And you can press on the control pad over here and it erases certain things. So you can see right there, there's just the power-ups and the things that we haven't unlocked yet. So that's kind of nice that we can see that, for instance. So we, we can tell right over here, well, we just got a power-up just randomly. Oh, we're getting all kinds of power-ups, boys. We've got something right over here. Something new and exciting that we have not yet captured. Let's see what it is. It is that thing. It's a trilobite that's adapted for cool climates. Regions where Astarte Borealis thrive. What I want to do is I'm pushing down this mountain a little bit. 
like this because what this is doing is this is going to also increase the kind of like the ambient temperature of our stuff so I kind of want to see if that helps out with some of the little critters as they get born in there have you all right so we've got one more power up over here let's go ahead and flutter over to it and grab we've got another seed of evolution we've got a normal recovery leaf things are looking good let's go ahead and get the time of flowing once more oh hold on let's get down here real quick let's take a let's take a little opportunity to just look at some of the creatures that we have Look over here. What is going on amongst our palm trees? We've got some spiders, y'all. That's some big ass spiders, too. Holy crap. Look at them. Kind of cute looking, though. Everything in this game is pretty cute. You can see there is just a ton of life that's thriving right now. We still have plenty of plankton. But what do the seas look like? Remember, we have a little sea area kind of in this region. We got some. Oh, right over there. There's our little buddy. There's a little jellyfish right over there doing his thing. Now, we're going to need some deeper seas. We're gonna need some deeper seas to get some cooler stuff. So we're probably gonna want at least one deep sea area to kind of like mess with. So let's consider doing that for a moment. Actually, you know what? Before we do the deep seas, let's go ahead and do a little bit more evolution. God, I love being able to evolute things. 739,000 years have passed. You know how it is. Let's go ahead and move along here. All right, let's see. A couple things are dying off, but other things are being reborn. And thus is the power of the ecosystem. Oh, we got bellflowers. All right, bellflowers have appeared in the world and they are very, very good at what they do right now. They're popping up all over the place, having a fantastic time. 85,000 bellflowers, holy crap, 102,000 bellflowers. All right, man, the ecosystem loves it some bellflowers big time. All right, so this is what we've got right now. Things seem to be just kind of staying stable. Our air temperature is a little bit low. A little bit low right now we're probably going to want to pump it up as a matter of fact we've got something new over here too you can see again right now I have the mini map so it's only showing things that are like new and exciting let's go find out where it is it should be right over right over here there it is a conifer tree tell me about your powers conifer tree what can you do for me trees that flourish in a variety of re of regions they have also evolved to grow in cool climates where oh no Lepi Dodendron could not. All right, so we've got a little bit of a sea area over here. Now let's see what happens if we make it all the more deeper though. Let's see, how do I wanna do this? Um, let's see, I can go right about like this here and then we can go ahead and shove this down. You can see right now, just still see, still see, still see. And once you get, I think to 10, there we go, 11. It goes into the deep sea area and this increases the overall temperature of the world, but it's going to decrease some of the surrounding temperature of our water. All right, so now we have a deep sea area. Let's see how it does. Water temperature is pretty cool right now. 24 degrees Celsius, not too bad. Let's go back over here and move things along. Conifer trees are doing good. Conifer trees are continuing to uh, do their thing. Actually, they're growing very, very well. Look at that over there. Red ferns also doing very well. Probably because the air temperature is so kind of like temperate right now. 12% animals, 84%, you can see right there, 87% plants right now. Oh, we just got something. Ger gerberbia or something like that just appeared. Where are you at, buddy? All right, so something we haven't done yet is mess around with our god powers here, like global warming and stuff. Let's go ahead and use it. Let's see what happens. We're gonna go ahead and use some of the global warmings and we're gonna see how this does. So there we go, we just went ahead and warmed up our place over there. You can see right there, it says now it's 23 degrees. Another two degrees right there. I'm gonna bring this up. We're gonna bring this up quite a bit, all right? All right, so things have been going pretty good. We got some sweet fish kinda moving around down over here in the deep seas. Boys know how it is. Things are pretty, pretty average around here. 29 degrees Celsius roundabouts. Things are looking good. We got plenty of spiders and the like. Oh, hold on. We just got something that was birthed. We just got, look at this little buddy over here. This guy right over here. We have a, you know what? Let's get down low for this. We got ourselves a lizard, boys. Our very first lizard. He's looking pretty legit, too. Hanging out over here by the water's edge. Kind of doing his thing. That's pretty cool. So he's gonna be like the very first critter that kind of leads us to the rest of the uh, animal kingdom, so to speak. I don't think that we got anything else moving around right now. I don't think so. Let's take a look. Got a couple of power-ups over here that we can probably grab if we want to. Let me go ahead and fly across the landscape to go ahead and get him. We got one over here in our little dry area. So this is what we need next. We need slightly lower temperature in order to birth this guy. 
So let's go back over to our area. Now remember, there's a couple of things that we can do to lower the overall temperature of the game. One of the easiest ways is to kind of like create mountains and elevate the land. So we can mess around with that, and that should give us exactly what we need for this. This guy, thing, this guy looks really cool. I like that ridge on his back. Just kind of going around here, increasing our land masses a little bit, bringing things up just a little bit. See right around like here, we can bring this portion up here if we want to as well. Yeah, see right there how it um, how it's changing the temperature of our planet? That's going to help things out though to get kind of stuff evolving in there, have you? Let's see what happens. Let's go back over here to the uh, evolution speedy up thing and see what happens. Right over here, calamites are going down, possibly just due to the uh, overall temperature of stuff and things. Alright. Our little stegas are kind of going down there too. 17,000, 21,000. Alright, it's going up and down. It's not too bad right now. There we go! Hold on. We just got him. I don't- Yep! Right over here! There we go! See on our plateau where he was born? He was born in the appropriate area of the temperatures in there, have you? Oh, look at this guy. This is the king of the mountain right here. Holy crap. This guy looks pretty legit too. Oh, cool. Our little desert area is really starting to flourish as well. Look at this guy. That, that's pretty slick. That is a beastly looking creature right there. Looks like he will take you out in a freaking heartbeat. So how's our seas doing as well? The land's doing pretty good. I imagine our seas are also- Oh yeah, we got fish flip-flopping around. Look at these guys moving about. We got mollusks on the ground over there. Couple of your trilobite style things floating around. Look at them go, man. Look at them go. Doing good. The water is teeming with life. But now the cool thing is- Oh, down here, here's our deep sea fish. There's not gonna be too many of them just because like our deep sea area isn't very big right now. We're getting a couple of power-ups just wandering around too. Over here in the shallows, we got all those different types of plankton and stuff as well. We've got some palm trees of flourishing. We've got our little, like, looks like almost an Incan pyramid or something like that over there. Starting to get some life as well. So, this is the game. Just kind of messed around a little bit with it. Showed you guys some of the different animals and some of the different power-ups and stuff. And we messed around with the land a little bit and created dinosaur. Well, sort of dinosaurs. This is lizards right now, technically. Oh, that thing just ate a giant piece of meat. Where the hell did that even come from? I don't even know where that meat was. Must have ate another, another little beastie or something like that. We've got a lot of plants and stuff. I don't know what he was chewing on, man. He got something, though, and he's very happy about that. Anyway... Let me guys know what you think about the game in the comment section below. I'm going to have a link to it. It's coming out in a few in a few days if you guys want to check it out. I think it's pretty legit though. Being able to do whatever you want and make a hot planet or a cold planet or a dinosaur planet and eventually being able to get like human beings and stuff like that is pretty neat. Anyway folks, stay foxy and much love. <laughs>